Okay, hello again. Now, sometimes one thing you want to do is, when you're in R, you'd like to store things for later. And this is done by variables. So, R has numerous ways of storing information. It can store things like uh, numbers, it can store text, it can store a whole big, what we call a data frame, which is like a spreadsheet of information. It can store information about categorical variables, which we call factors. And whenever you store these things, which we call objects, you can actually give them names so you can get to them again later. Also, when you do any analysis in R, so for example, if you did a t-test, you could store the results of that, which is also an object with a name and often referred to that as a variable. So let's say, for example, I want to store the number 10 and it's my favorite number. So I could actually create a variable. So I give it a name, my favorite number. And then we use basically a less than and minus. So it looks like it's called the assign and it looks like a little left pointing arrow. And I can give it the number 10. Hit return. And what this has done is it said, take the object, in this case, a single number 10, store it and give it the name my favorite number so if we go up here and look in the workspace you can see now i've got a thing called my favorite number and it's got the value 10. no problem but i can actually use this i can do things i could go my favorite now as we've mentioned before if i want to do this i can do the tab to get it quickly favorite number hit return it's 10. i can say my favorite number plus three 13. In fact, I could do two. I could have my second favorite number, and I could call that six. So now you can see up here, we've got my favorite, second favorite number, six. I could put these together. My favorite number plus my second favorite number is 16. So it gives you a way of storing stuff for later and you can give it names so you can use that name again and again. So let's have a look at some of the things we could do. Well first of all we could do a list. Let's say I've got a list of numbers. Now if I want to write a list of numbers in R, I use a function called C. It actually stands for concatenate but it basically means put together in a list. So let's call it my first list. Another name for this list is a vector. In fact it's probably a better name. I went C, I can go 1, 2, 3, 6, 10. So now if you look up here, you've got a thing called my favorite list, and it says it's numeric. So it says that it's something, a vector, that contains numbers, and there's five of them. If I click on it, it shows you them here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 10. Or I could just type my first list, and it gives me the numbers. I can even do things like I could add two to every of them numbers. So three, four, five, six. I could even assign what I just did to another name. So I call it my calculation. It's going to be my first list plus two. And that's created an object called my calculation numeric five. So again, if I type my calculation, I get them numbers. As well as numbers, I could do another one. I would um, I call it my string list. I could do C again to put it together, and I could have dog, comma, cat. And this has now got a thing that contains characters. So anything that looks like text, it's not numbers, it's called a character. And my string list, and it's got two things in it. Again, if I put my string list, there they are. If I try and do something like add four to that, well, it doesn't like that because it says, well, this object, the thing that this is named is a basically a vector of strings, four is a number. You can't add numbers to strings. It has problems. Other things we can do, we can also have um, vectors of um, what we call a Boolean. A Boolean is a thing that's either true or false. So my Boolean list, we could have true, true, false.
cells. This, if we look now, it's my Boolean list. It's a logical thing because all the values are true or false. The names don't have to be long. I could just have x. x equals 10. x is 10. The most useful one you'll ever see in R is a thing called a data frame. And think of it like an Excel spreadsheet. Basically, it's going to be a spreadsheet where each column could be something else. So let's, to do this and build it, let's start off with something. Let's have x is equal to numbers 1, 2, 3. So we've got our x. And y is going to be a string. And we'll have dog, cat, rabbit. I can put these together, so I'm going to call it my first data frame, and it's going to be a data frame. So unlike before, I use the C, I use the data frame creator, and I'm going to take X and Y. So if you go up here, we've got data, and it's called my first data frame. It tells me I've got three observations of two variables. And if I look at it, my first data frame, here you see, we've got this little sort little mini spreadsheet, and we've got each row is an individual, what R calls observation, and we've got two variables, so the first one, x is 1, and y is dog. Now we don't have x and y, we could have different names, this is called the column names, and they give us a name to get this. This is really useful because we might just want to get this part out, and we can do that by saying, you've got this first data frame, which is the name I gave that data frame, and inside that I've got a column which has got y. In fact, let's change that to make it even nicer. Let's call it my data frame, and I'm going to call it um, pets equals y. So now if I go to my first data frame, now this column is called pets. So these could be pets that I've had. I've had a dog, a cat, and a rabbit. I might just want to get these, so I can go my first data frame and then you just use the dollar sign and that says to R you've got an object which is a data frame it's called my first data frame inside that there will be a column so you then give the name of that column so in this case pets and when I hit return it just gives me that column it's saying I've got a column the first one's dog the second one's cat the third one's rabbit and it's treating this as what's called a factor so it says it's a categorical variable and the possible levels are cat Okay, so the main take home message with this one is when you do stuff in R, you can store it for later. When you store it for later, you can give it a name. That will become really, really useful. And when we do that, we sometimes call them objects or variables or vectors. But generally, the idea is you're storing a piece of information that R has and giving it a name for later use. Okay, bye bye.